hello welcome back to the channel welcome back to the Mustard see faith channel i know you noticed that i am wearing the same outfit and it's because to make this easier for myself i'm recording two videos in a day and this is actually one of the steps going back to my last video of the vision for this podcast i want to be consistent and one of the steps that i'm putting in place to make sure that i'm able to get videos out consistently is recording two sessions at a time so in this video as you can see from the title i will be talking about how my views on relationships and sex have changed after becoming a christian before i continue i want to say a quick prayer dear heavenly father thank you for the person that's listening to this video lord i pray that it is useful and impactful and they can take something away from it from what i say today in this video dear god lord i pray that your Holy Spirit will soften their hearts to receive this message and that going forward it will help them and help me to stay accountable to the vision that you've called me to have for my relationships, dear God. I pray for the courage to speak authentically and that people who listen to this will also be authentic with themselves and truthful with themselves and truthful with you in the area of their relationships in the area of sex dear god in jesus name i pray amen so let's get straight into it one night i was just up really late and i was just thinking about this and it was on my mind heavy and i wrote a note in my phone about my thoughts and views on relationships before becoming a christian and then how it's changed now that i'm taking this seriously and when i say becoming a christian i was raised in church my whole life i think i was always a christian but when I, before i became a true follower a real disciple a reader of the bible i should say yeah before i was doing all of that how my views have changed to now so the first thing let's just talk about it sex before my views change, I just thought sex outside of marriage just was not a big deal. Only thing I heard was just don't have it until you're married. No reason why, no clear understanding on why it was so important to wait. And now I know the importance of it. And that didn't just come from overnight. I had to read books on it. I listened to sermons on it. I actually asked questions to God about it and then he revealed the answer to me through all of it. It wasn't just like I got the answer one night. It was eventually realized, I realized I understood. Now, my view on sex is sex is best within the context of marriage. And one of the first things I remember that helped me to understand this was an analogy of using, of comparing sex to water and fire. So water, water is something that we need for life. It is also something that can cause extreme damage. Coming from the islands, I understand how much damage floods can cause from hurricanes, how much damage it can cause to a, it can cause to a roof that leaks. Water damage can seep into the floors and cause mold, all that kind of stuff. But it is also the thing that helps us to sustain life. And I, this is Pastor Mike, I remember he gave the example of water that is behind a dam creates energy that can be used to fuel countries it gives electricity whereas water that is not confined within the boundaries that it's supposed to be in can cause flooding and create damage that you have to repair for years afterwards and i completely understood it because i grew up in a country that frequently had hurricanes and sex within that confines of marriage within that context of marriage is the safest way to have it it's something that continues to give life to your marriage. It brings you closer to your partner. It makes you understand the importance of marriage. And outside of it, it can lead to just destruction. Not saying that every person who's having sex outside of their marriage is doomed for destruction, but they may not just have everything that God has called them to have within their marriage, within their relationship outside of marriage, especially if they're a Christian. So that was the first thing that kind of changed. That was the first area that I decided, okay, you're gonna be celibate. It hasn't been easy. There are some days it sucks. There are some days that I understand the purpose of it and I am content. There's that. So how my feelings were before I became a Christian, I thought it was all about feelings. Like I always wanted those butterflies. However, I realized that what's more important is values and morals and feelings come along with that. If we don't have the same values, sorry. If we don't have the same morals, 
sorry even if my feelings say i like you these things are now priority in my life and that's how it has to be also before becoming a christian i was not intentional about who i gave my time to which is kind of embarrassing for me to admit but and i think that might have stemmed from having a low self-esteem but if you liked me i could get to like you and i would just give you my time however now if you like me i really do think about what benefit am i going to get from continuing this conversation from continuing to pour my time and energy into having a conversation with a person just because they like me but now and i don't know what i was thinking when i wrote this but let me tell you word for word what i wrote at probably like 12 a.m one morning I said, don't even try to holla if you don't know Jesus because I will respectfully show you no interest. And that is the truth. Respectfully, do not take this the wrong way. If they don't love Jesus, respectfully don't give them any more of your time. Because loving Jesus is the first thing. If you love your God with all your heart, all your and then it says love your neighbor as yourself. So if you don't love God, how then are you able to extend love to me as your wife as your girlfriend get me next thing that i thought before taking this seriously before taking christianity seriously was that if you did a few christian stuff you were okay if you went to church here and there you were good if you prayed a little bit here and there you were good you listened to a couple of worship songs here and there you were good however now i understand the importance of actually serving in the church and even though i saw this my whole life i don't understand why I was just so stubborn right, and not realizing how important it was. My father, as long as I've known him, has always served in the church. My mother, as long as I've known her, has always served in the church. And I don't know why I didn't see how important that was. Because if you're able to serve God, you're then able to serve people in a marriage. Love isn't just about feelings, it's also about service. And one way to show that love is through service service to God, service to your spouse, service to your daughter, your son, your family members. So after becoming a Christian, service has been something, or serving has been something that has been so important to me. Another thing that changed for me was now I trust God to send me that man, which is harder to do in reality than it is to say. Before that, I did not trust God. I was like, I didn't see the importance of having to trust God to wait. So I was like, whoever's out here, I'ma just, if it works out, it works out. But now I'm just like, God, I'd rather be single. Even though there are days where I'm like, why? I'd rather be in this place than to put up with another person that you have not called me to be with. A person that is not going to lead me to my purpose or help me get to my purpose. A person that's not going to help me get closer to you. All those things have now become more important to me. I've now realized the importance of trusting God. Now do not take me wrong. There are days where it's easier said than done. There are days where I'm frustrated. There are days where I really don't want to, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to trust God. However, some way, somehow, he always brings me back around to this point to realizing like yeah you tried this already your way you sure you don't want to give it a try my way so here i am i'd rather trust god before becoming a christian i'm gonna just read these a few of these out godly marriage seemed lame to me and i think it's because i just didn't have a proper understanding of it however now a marriage without god at the center of it i don't want it and a marriage with god at the center of it is the only way that it can be healthy I just want to pause here to also mention that this does not have to just be a marriage. I should have said in relationships in general, so God should be in the center of relationships, whether that be friendships, family relationships, dating relationships, those kind of relationships as well, not just in marriage. Another thing, sex was associated with a lot of shame. However, now I realize sex was created by God. It was his idea. It's not a bad thing. It's just the context of it. Is it done within marriage, like how God has called it to be? It can either be a weapon used by the devil against your marriage, or it can be a weapon used by you within your marriage against the devil to prevent him from coming in between you and the person that you're with. Before becoming a Christian, I had a lot of fantasies. I was always into Disney movies and fairy tales. I read a lot of books associated with love and merit, well, with love that were all about feelings. However, now I realize 
relationships take a lot of work it's not all fairy tales it's not all romantic there are some really hard conversations that need to be had there are going to be arguments disagreements and it's just going to take work it's another area of your life that requires you to put effort into it to get that reward out of it and maybe what god is trying to tell me now is i'm not even ready to be putting in energy into a relationship when i have all these other things that i need to be doing which is a hard truth and you can see that i'm actually like deeping it like ouch so that's just how all of that has changed and what i've learned is that who you are connected to is really important because those people can either help you get towards your purpose and live the life that you are called to live by god or they can distract you from that they could pull you away from that and it's one of the ways that i think the devil has succeeded in deterring people from their true calling obviously romantic relationships are the area that we have the most intimacy with somebody else and that is reflective of the kind of intimacy god wants us to have with him he wants to know us deeply truly he wants us to love him and he wants to love us the areas of our lives that we don't like he loves the area of us the part of us our personality that we don't like he created that in you he loves it and he also wants us to have that kind of intimacy with him to where we know his voice to where we, we feel comfortable going to him first with any problems that we may have to where we are able to speak honestly with him about what we've been through and even express feelings that we feel like we can't express to anybody else we can express that to god and i feel like that is beautiful that is pure true love to where you can love somebody as a whole with their flaws and everything going back to how i mentioned that i was celibate i remember and this is where it can become easy to fall back into your old ways and hard to stick to it because i remember i told this guy that i'm celibate and he was like why you should be having sex before that so you can know if it's good and if it's gonna be good in a marriage and i was like Whew, i don't even know how to respond to this like wow like when i thought about it afterwards i started to to think about why is it that we feel like we have to have sex first in order to make that commitment but in other areas we can see something like it and commit to it right away for example for me my dream car has always been a range rover i've never driven one i've only seen a few well i've seen a lot of them living here actually but before i even been inside of it it has always been my dream car just from seeing it and the moment that i'm able to afford it i don't have to test drive it i don't have to ask a lot of questions about it like i'm buying it but if we could do that with a dream car if i can be that way with a dream car i really do think i'll be able to commit to a marriage without having to have sex first just because of all the other things that I see that I like that are more important to me and that I understand if it's my dream car it's gonna drive smoothly I'll learn to drive it smoothly I'll learn to get used to how that car drives I will learn how to have sex in my marriage like I don't have to do it first that is just an example of how I deal with people who who criticize me for wanting to be celibate before marriage before i leave i just want to show a few books that i've read that have helped to shape my view in the area that it is now and i think i need to actually go back to read this so this one love that lasts ring ready who is which is actually written by a lady that is from where i live she gives practical tools on what to do and what not to do when you know thinking about marriage now this one is the weight and this is from megan and megan good and devon franklin this book helped me with waiting and i contemplated not even talking about this book because as you may know they are getting a divorce so i kind of when i heard that the devil wanted me to give up however this book regardless of if they're getting a divorce is still something that helped me to decide to wait and that's just the truth of it even though they're getting a divorce i need to read this one again 25 ways to prepare for marriage other than dating and it talks about pursuing your purpose enjoying your single year your single year it has nothing to do with actually dating it's all about you and god and this one is a pretty famous book relationship goals and he talks about his marriage with his wife what he's been through his struggles with pornography this book also is one of the reasons why i've decided to you know give my relationships over to god and have a vision for your life 
in the area of her relationships as well. I'll probably link these, but these are just a few of the books. There was also one more book that's called, I really need to mention this one, it's called Sex, Jesus, and the Conversations the Church Forgot. I'll probably put a picture up over here if I can work out how to edit it in. But that book was so honest and it was from the perspective of a woman who was addicted to pornography and did not trust God in the area of her relationships and how she was able to overcome that. And I truly was impacted by that book because she talked about some things that I've also experienced and I've also hadn't thought about. So yeah, that was a good book. So as you can see, I had to read a lot. It took a lot of convincing for me to, in this area and one thing about me once I learn how to do something the right way it's hard for me to go back however I, I like I don't want to make it seem like I'm perfect in this area I have struggled I have times where I'm just like why and I don't understand and I forget everything that I read I have times where it's it's like I just want to say to hell with it and give up however God has been faithful and he has kept me and I'm able to talk honestly about that here today on this video. So that's all I have to say for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you can take something away from this, whether that be if you're single in a relationship, dating, about to be married, married. I hope that it impacts you. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed week. Have a blessed life. See ya in the next one.